Well, thank you, and thanks for that. Like, you know, I've, I've been feeling a little, like, you know, uh, anxious about this. It's a full house, like, and at the same time, the topic, it seems that um, this somehow touches all of us um, as, as we find it interesting. And I'm going to be talking about a topic that basically you all are professionals about as well. So putting myself to some extent in a quite tough, tough spot, but like, let's see. We all have been there, right? You come to the work, you put the headset on, you want to find your focus, you start typing on your, um, on your laptop, maybe actually open a Figma, uh, start moving pieces around because you're building the UX and actually like uh, the, the UI layouts need to be ready by afternoon for your team to be able to start working on those. And then there's this guy. <laughs> so, sorry, can I interrupt? Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> I think you have met that moment. And that's kind of like, you know, if it happens once, that's fine. And if it happens a few times, okay. But because it's continuous, <laughs> that's how we feel. Now, who am I to talk about this topic uh, overall? Maybe we, I need to give a little bit of intro. So I'm Juho, I'm a Finnish guy. Um, have been working at Futurize for three and a half years. Futurize is this uh, digital co engineering company. We do design and development. And before that, I was also in another consultancy uh, working on the same, same area. So five years in total in the, in the, in the space and looking from service, bi service design, bi uh, business design. Sometimes I like to play around with uh, UI, actually like, you know, figure out together our visual designers on like, hey, what are we actually trying to achieve? Then look at the uh, business side of things, so play around with analytics. Um, and then I've been many times coaching on teams. How do we actually get more transparency and better flows? And last thing, like last year, I have been, <laughs> sorry for this one. <laughs> yeah, there might be someone in the audience. Um, so I was sitting uh, here in Oslo uh, office for Futurize with this awesome team. And it might sound like, you know, today that I'm a little bit structured and uptight, but at the same time, I think like, this is more about finding structure and, and when do we find the time to be productive and when do we find the time to be like, you know, fun and engaging. Like fun times when we are organizing uh, future talks, it's a whole company coming together on Fridays, 500 people from different countries and our team wants to engage with others so that we do planking. That's not a bad idea, why not like, you know, 500 people in the same call. Um, I like to also do like, you know, just like random stuff, which is totally outside of like, you know, maybe team flow. So I, I, maybe one day I will become an artist. If you go to Spotify, you can, good time to promote songs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, but like nevertheless, so through the work, uh, it doesn't matter where, uh, where we are going. If we're building new services, like for example, Blunk, if you heard about this face payment service, that was released uh, here in Oslo. So the first pay face payment service in Norway. Uh, built together with Tina DMB and us. We're talking about team. How do we get like, you know, this stuff uh, out there so that people can use it? How do we make it so that our team has good times, is creative, solving problems and so forth? Or if you're talking about the cultures, it's the same thing. How do we get into a team flow? Now, I, it might be quite obvious, like we need to kind of like understand what are we talking when we're talking about team flow. Team, everyone knows what a team is. Group of people coming together to reach a common goal. Flow, again, quite familiar stuff. Moving in a steady stream, something flowing. Um, or when, of course, like, you know, as we, most of us at least know, flow in terms of as a mind, uh, mental state, being so immersed into a topic that you lose the uh, outside world, basically what happens. You're so energized. Now, team flow. <laughs> I, I think you appreciate the animation. Like, you know, that's how you will remember like, you know, what is super important. The team flow is super important. Um, it's a state, of my, uh, state in which team members, we balance the individual immersions together with uh, problem solving together as a team in a continuous stream um, even though the uncertainties changes, so that we reach a common goal, creatively and effectively. That's how I define it. So this is what we want to achieve. Some nodding. And in order to achieve something, we need to understand what are the problems. 
So what's preventing us today? And I want to make this a little interactive. So I'm going to present some cases in the past. If it's been a problem for you, if you experienced it, I ask problem or not. Yes, you wave. If no, just chill out. This picture is from our Blunk team, but I want to tell a story from the picture that actually happened three years ago. It's another case. But um, we started working with, a, with our client and in a, in a really rapid organization. They're like, you know, making decisions fast, um, like few hundred people in that, in that company and we're working directly with the leadership. Um, their question is, how can we like, you know, build these platform business models? What are those for us? What, how do we get into it? And, and there we are, like, okay, let's organize, a, like, kickstart together and figure it out what we want, what is the objective. <coughs> we went to the kickoff, there was actually quite a lot of people, um, their internal startups and then also the leadership, 20 people. We come out and we're like, hmm, people want quite different things. And so many people are talking about, like, some really tangible SDKs and the other ones are talking about direction and someone is saying, like, we need to launch this platform after this project. Really hard uh, to understand. So we were, and in our team, we're talking about, hey, we need to like start, not now start producing because we want to get to this flow. And at the same time, the objective was unclear still for us, scope was unclear and expectations were not like, we didn't understand enough. Maybe you've been there. And in a way, I also blame why this happens is the dark side of agile. Like, you know, every, many consultancies have been talking about you need to be agile. What is agile? It's about speed being able to adopt and do some things. Well, speed doesn't mean cutting like a chicken's head and running like crazy. It actually means that we have some structure in order to um, work effectively and creatively. Well, two weeks in that project and our client is calling me on, on Saturday. Hey, Juho, this is not going right. You're producing, but you're not doing anything that we want you to do. We're gonna quit this or then we need to figure out another way. Not the best moment of my life. Actually, the worst moment that I now share with you on my career, it felt like, you know, really bad. But at the same time, I really cared. I wanted to, for us to figure out how do we reach those objectives. So, the value for speed in the organizations, what happens in, like, you know, after that kickoff, we came, it looked similar to this situation with Blunk, that everyone is working on their own streams and they don't have any more time. We're, we don't pay attention into, like, you know, because we need to speed up uh, that, hey, by the way, let's still come together and spend more t time together. So we value too much speed. That's the problem. Experienced it? Yes or not? Well, yeah, a little bit like half of it maybe, like, you know, a little less maybe. Okay, we're addicted to distractions. Now this is going to be, as we're looking again the situation, we're preparing for a demo with our Blunk team. Oh. Digital stuff, like, you know, okay, Slack messages coming in, ma emails coming in on this screen. Um, <laughs> even, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and we are distracted all the time by these bombardments. At the same time, oh, sh quite heavy calendars over here. And why is that? Because people are allocated into multiple things. They're working on multiple tasks. There's no time to concentrate on one thing because you need to be doing a, that ad hoc thing for another project other than like, you know, be able to call to, to another client. And why? Well, basically one thing is like, you know, we're saying to yes too easily. And then when you really lose it, these guys already went to the couch and started talking about the last cat video they saw. Um, okay, I was a little bit painting, it was not this kind of like, you know, bad situation, but like nevertheless, so all of a sudden we have lost the, lost the uh, attention and we are addicted to these distractions. Problem or not? Woo! Problems! <laughs> okay, now problematic people like, you know, <laughs> no, that sounded bad. I was also in the picture, I don't know if you noticed, like, you know, so I also, I'm not saying something bad for others. Okay, um, so uh, business-wise, we're trying to figure out, when, when this work styles come together. So we're combining quantitative needs. We now want numbers, business wants numbers. Um, uns remove uncertainty, right? We all see in this picture, I'm just modifying it from the work styles. As a designer, when I'm in a project, I want to have enough time to qualify, um, get qualitative data, research the customers 
tell them, uh, t t understand them, listen to them, understand what's going on in their minds and in their lives in order to design uh, something that will stick with them. Look from the journey perspective, whereas developer is then again, okay, but we have these screens, so what happens in this part of the like, you know, screen? And, and need for a clarity. Okay, and then when there's clarity needed, but business is saying like, but we have these deadlines. We need to push it out now. So we're trying to uh, get uh, clarity on the work styles. Problem or not? Well, yes, not too many, but like still we're uh, find, finding this out. And this is part of like, you know, these multidisciplinary teams. Finally, a challenge on this is what organizations usually look like. So we do have spread it into business teams and the technology teams and admin teams. And it's kind of like, you know, 2012 we were talking about Spotify already, like, you know, how Spotify is organized, like, you know, around fe functional um, feature teams and which deliver a value from end to end so that whatever goes on the UI is also attached all the way to backend systems and whatnot. When we're organized like this, me as a, for example, designer, when I'm trying to figure out something, uh, multi service uh, that would need to go out. If I'm organized in a designer team, I'm dependent on the apps team and the web team, so I need to be talking with them, but they have different priorities. They are not prioritizing this mortar stuff that I'm working on, but they are prioritizing something else which is important for them. We're super easily dependent because of the organizational structure and outside forces. Problem or not? Quite some hands. I think, like, you know, most common was this. Uh, was definitely the distracted. So I would argue these are the four reasons like that we're not able to reach what we want to. And if we start actually looking then what we want to achieve and we break it down, we want to balance the immersion in the individual activities. So let's look at that. Solving problems together in a continuous stream. Problems together, together in a continuous stream and then to reach goals. That helps us to tune up for the flow. So, balance individuals' immersion, or in order to balance individuals' immersion, we should allow ourselves to get um, focused. Okay, who has not heard of, like, you know, you, you are able to uh, block your notifications? We know this. We know that you're able to put like notification blocker, do not disturb modes on your phones. Yes, we have been told that basically I need to make clarity on my schedule. Well, have you? I haven't that much that I could. And one thing that I don't notice is that why are we not working on this? And I find it like, you know, it's super hard because I don't know like if it's gonna cause like, you know, any, I'm not inspired on it. What I have done is like, you know, then sometimes like, you know, when coming up with this sort of challenge or then any other, like, you know, there's like task at hand, this UI thing, like, you know, not interested, I don't, I'm not inspired. So instead of starting from the inspiration as Mark Manson has uh, modeled this, like inspiration leads into motivation into action, go vice versa. There are studies on the brain, like how brains work, that basically if you, brain, if you feel happy, brain understands that, or sends serotonin and dopamine to your mouth and you start smiling. You can do it the other way around. If I'm here smiling, I think I'll be become happy despite being nervous. <laughs> That's what I was doing in the background, like, you know, before coming here on the stage. Okay, nevertheless, so start with the action and like, you know, that would help also, like, you know, just, just do it or just do something else what you need to work on and before distracting others and keep trying because we easily what happens, like after five minutes, I don't want to do it anymore you should still continue and try to push it. Secondly, establish structures that allow teams to flourish. This is the structure part of me, I'm a fan of structures. I guess, how many are using already dailies, planning, reviews, or retros, this sort of like basic agile stuff in your daily work? Okay, quite a few, I would say, if they, this was something between 40 to 60%. If you're not, uh, I would really much are like, Encourage to get along, like try out and learn something about like how could you apply this? Because for example, instead of like, you know, us having uh, weekly meetings uh, when we are talking what's going on, you have dailies, 50 minutes or even less 
what's going on, are there blockers? Like, easy peasy as this. At the same time, we will need to take the best bits from the design world. Because easily we're kind of like, okay, we need to write these, like if what happens in dailies, we're sharing what's going on, planning, we plan what's happening on the sprint, and we go with on like really detailed level for the developers to develop. That's not like, you know, what works on the designer perspective. I don't want to know like, you know, like this is the button that is going to be pressed and I need to like, you know, then like, you know, be filling some Jira or Trello board to work on the task. So the in design, like look at the customer journey, like, you know, this is how it starts and then design the UIs on that and then flow by end of the sprint of the design sprint, we are structuring it into the development. Super easy. I was just like talking about this in our current project again with our PO that this is how we want to run it uh, from the design perspective. And now we're working on it. Uh, just this will help us to match the work styles. Embrace the best as an example. And then reorganizing teams. This is going to be hard because organizations don't change like that. So depending on who you're talking to, like you know, it might be that you're not able to make a change fast. But what, in, for example, in our case currently and in the past case I've been, we have had the chance to talk to the um, to the right people who are able to impact also on how do we organize. So instead of working on those siloed teams, you're looking at the customer journey or you're looking at one service. For example, in Blunk, this was of course easier. We were part of innovation team. So we did have a multidisciplinary team with the, me being the project lead, the client side, there's a business uh, owner. We have uh, designers in the same team. We have front-end, back-end developers. We're able to like, you know, do the full stream without like, you know, having too many dependencies, good. In the core business, much harder. Because in the, but it's not, I'm not to say like, you know, it's not, it's not doable. It is very doable. Um, it might be just that your team is much bigger because you're working on also um, multiple things. So there's small systems. Don't sit on systems. F think through the, through the whole value chain. Like, you know, end to end, um, how do you provide the value to the customer through service? Uh, in a continuous stream to reach a common goal. Okay, so again, coming back to the earlier case, customer calling me and like, you know, this is not going well. If we would have done it so that actually we would have agreed on ways of working early on. So what we did now with Bloom, like, you know, there are no same challenges coming in. We have shared expectations. When we start by hopes and fears, what, what are the expectations for me as an individual and what do I get, expect to learn as an outcome? Um, what goes into collaboration? And then, don't go into like, you know, content, like now we need to produce this content. What we did was like, you know, next time we got together, we're talking about, hey, okay, what tools do we want to use? Um, how do we expect to behave and like, you know, treat each other? Low ceiling, high threshold. No, not that way. <laughs> high ceiling, low threshold. These sort of things. And then we mapped those down and like, you know, those guided our way. At the same time, we are setting up, like, we have a futurized that running. We, I'm currently in the client base, like, where, where we are. We are having objectives and key results. So this will help you to, if it's personal or if it's team level, OKR, this is a tool that allows you to also say no. So you're defining objective. For example, I want to get fit by summer, summer shape. And then my key result would be, how do I measure? What's the outcome, like, you know, that is measurable? For example, losing five kilos. My initiatives can be running, can be jogging, can be uh, jumping just up and down, can be talking in these sort of events because I think this is also quite uh, um, consuming <laughs> in a positive way. <laughs> but then you iterate on the initiatives. So like, you know, have reflection points like, you know, hey, evaluate, are we mo moving in the right direction? And you, you change around. Again, your team will have a good flow into understanding these are the one or three objectives, not 10, few, and then this is how we're going to measure it. So, okay, you measure what you learn. There can be, again, criticism on this. But it's going to be a learning experience. You set them once and then you um, iterate on it. For example, on a quarterly basis. Finally, uh, figuring out what to do. I have been a really good person on, like, also in this distraction, this guy. Just yesterday I was that guy. Sorry. <laughs> so, at the same time, like, nowadays, if, for example, setting a workshop, I'm figuring out the way. This is just like, you know, example on like a project where we are looking at the identification. I have started to plan for the session, the workshop that we are doing, and there's something which like, I needed to keep it small so that we don't read everything. 
uh, service blueprint level stuff going into flowchart thinking like, you know, really rapid drafts on like how would we do it so that we would get into end results. So we are trying to figure out what is the, what are the challenges within identification when we succeed and when we fail and, and how, how can we improve those. Again, I'm not going to teammates like, you know, hey, what should, like, okay, I could go and spar, but like I'm not going like, you know, immediately like just ask when I have already gathered information. But what we are doing is that I'm playing around with it and now I have options that we could go. And then I go and discuss with another person. So I'm thinking before acting on, on things, I'm trying to understand myself. Long story short, <laughs> good to remember. And it's like if I break it down to three, it's allowing ourselves to concentrate. It's about establishing these structures that allow our team to flourish. And then understanding first before acting. I am not saying don't go and ask, you should be asking. However, just think what's relevant, should I ask it this from whom? And eventually, with what it boils down to is if you like, I, I basically like, you know, have nowadays like few questions that are like, you know, reflecting once in a while. Have we said this right? Are we able to focus? Do, have we agreed on the ways of working? Is it clear? Do we have a clear scope and objective? And then um, do we take best out of work styles, uh, rituals, and are we as de little dependent as possible? Because if we do this, I would really argue that the team flow, balancing the immersion in individual's actions and solving problems together in a continuous stream to reach a goal, a common goal, is possible, much better. So if you did to know, why is it what's preventing you? Is it something that I shared today? Or is it something else? That's what I would like to leave you with. So thank you. All right, while we have you up here, thank mm. you. Do we have any questions from, oh, do you wanna talk about your tips? Well, I thought like, you know, are we going to share this like, you know, stuff as well? Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. If anyone wants to snap a quick picture. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, five, well. four, three. I see so many phones. One thing only, checked out the first one, definitely. Uh, if you were not in IXDA, Kia Chang was talking about how do they uh, combine designers, us as creatives, like working with the development. Super nice talk. It's simply simple, it shows like, you know, tangible stuff like, you know, from Excel sheets on the, like what team practices do they actually have in place. Super nice, that I would do.